verse 15 to 7. And just keep your finger there. Matthew 16, verse 15 to 7. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's really important in your life is to know on the inside that God and Jesus is Lord of your life. And so sometimes you can kind of get into a battle with people and try and figure out, well, are you really healed? Are you really going to be set free? Is God really going to move on your behalf? And there needs to be a knowing on the inside of you that God is God and He's a good God and He's going to begin to move you forward. And so over here in Matthew chapter 16 is something that really will help you carry your life and realize that revelation knowledge is something that you need. If you are, you know, whether it's concerning your giving and you wonder how you're ever going to pay your bills or how you're ever going to get set free or how you're ever going to see healing... You need to get that revelation on the inside that somehow that God will reveal himself to you and that nobody over coffee break can shake what God has said to you in your heart. Maybe you've got a plan. Maybe you've got a purpose. Maybe you believe that God's called you to do something. And when you get that revelation on the inside, people can't shake that. Now, the enemy will try, but God will begin to move and to change your life. So Matthew 16, give me a minute, I'm going to turn there. And uh, verse 15 to 17. Let's just look at that for just a moment here. And uh, I'm going to just reach up to verse 13. It says, When Jesus had come into the region of Caesarea and Philippi, he, asked that his, he said to his disciples, Who do men say that the, that the Son of Man is? And so he said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So sometimes in your life, when you're beginning to step out and begin to see God move in your life, you need to begin to know that there's a God idea on the inside and that God has begun to move and to change your life in some way, shape, or form. The next scripture, two down from that, talks about the authority that you've been given the keys. And so you've been given authority to walk in your authority. But without that revelation knowledge of what your authority is, you're kind of like, a wet paper bag, you're not really sure. You can poke a lot of holes in it and begin to wonder. But if you've ever walked out healing or a financial uh, miracle or a miracle itself or something that has happened in your life, you can say, I know that God was God and God changed my situation and God set me free. Nobody can shake you from that. Nobody can change that. Nobody can begin to to try and talk you out of what God has done in your life. And so you need to get a revelation on the inside. Sometimes we've got to move it, you know, six inches below your brain and begin to take it from your head right into your heart, a little longer than six inches. But you've got to move it into your heart because sometimes you know yourself when you're talking about Jesus and the love of Christ, you've got a revelation in your heart. But sometimes your head might be screaming something else. Well, that same revelation that you have in your heart concerning the love of Jesus, maybe you need that revelation that God's going to help your situation concerning your finances, or God's going to help your situation concerning your job, or your peace, or whatever it is that you need from God. Begin to get that revelation on the inside. One of the most beautiful things is to get over into praise. When you begin to praise, the Bible says that He has given us thanksgiving and praise, and it ushers in the presence of God. How many know the presence of God is what you need to be set free? Amen? You don't need the presence of the devil. You don't need the presence of some critical person. You need the presence of God to begin to move in your life and just begin to push all of that other stuff out and begin to say, God's presence is here, God's power is here, and God's word is saying something in my life. So, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. But by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, has revealed something to you, and you'll know that God is moving you forward. Something very, very important. We don't learn that through our physical senses, but through our spiritual eyes. The eyes of your understanding. You remember Paul's Ephesians prayer? That the eyes of your understanding would be open. That you would recognize the hope and calling that God has for you. Are your spiritual eyes open today? Are your eyes open to recognize what God has said is yours? If you want to be free from whatever that bondage is, whatever that bondage or burden that you're carrying, if your spiritual eyes were open, you would see a Jesus that went to the cross. You would see a Jesus that shed his blood. You would see a Jesus that declared, it is finished. 
And based on that, you can begin to say, then if it is finished, I am whole in Jesus' name. Amen? How many know today you can begin to claim some wholeness for your life? When you get a revelation on the inside, you can begin to train your brain. Amen? You, you know, uh, uh, something about stepping out by faith means that you're coming into agreement with God. What has God's word said about you? I mean, that's what you got, how you got saved. When you begin to take God at his word... It said that when you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord, with the heart man believes unto salvation, but with confession, righteousness is confessed, and salvation comes into your life. When you begin to do that, you come into agreement with God, and in agreement with, with, with what God says is yours. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 3. We'll get to Luke in a minute. Deuteronomy chapter 3. And I just want to show you, in an Old Testament way, the power of agreement, because sometimes you can feel very alone. You know, we can talk about praise reports and how people can call a friend and people can agree in prayer. All of those things are absolutely important. But I want us to look at something here in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 20. Um, <clears throat> I, I like to read up just a little bit so we can get the whole concept of what God is saying here. Okay, uh, sorry, it's Deuteronomy 32, verse 30. Boy, I read, wrote that wrong. Deuteronomy 32, verse 30. Deuteronomy 32, verse 30. Amen. It says, how could one chase a thousand and two could put ten thousand to flight? How could one chase a thousand but two could put ten thousand to flight? Now what that's talking about there is that in the middle of your storm, God is trying to tell you that in your own way you can chase a thousand. But when you come into agreement with God, when you come into agreement with a brother or sister in the Lord, you can put ten thousand to flight. What that means is that you're not supposed to just try and go this alone. You're supposed to go from 1,000 to 10,000. Well, how does that happen? Through the prayer of agreement. You can simply agree with God in His Word. That's one opportunity, probably the greatest, because you've only got yourself sometime. But when you come into agreement with God in His Word concerning your healing, concerning salvation, concerning wholeness, but when you come into agreement with somebody else, you move from 1,000 to 10,000. That is a whole lot more. Amen? We saw Rahab the harlot that began... I hate even, but anyway, that's how it is in the Bible. But uh, when, 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 you know, when she began to have them, the men lowered in the basket out the window of her home, and we know this, the, the sermon I preached a couple weeks ago about the red rope representing the blood of Christ, and that how that was one of the first cases of the power of agreement, that when those men were lowered down in that basket, that her life was hooked to their life. She said, I, my life is, is, is hooked to yours now. And they said, hey. If you stay on what you said, if you give us your word, and she said, you give me your word, and they're, they're in exchange giving words to one another, they came into agreement, and we know that based on that, she joined covenant with them, and as they lowered them down in the basket, she had an inheritance in everything that they went out into the known world and did. So as she lowered that basket down, she came into partnership with them. That's essentially why we come to church. We come to church not to see how many people's going gray. We come to church to see partners. We come to church to see people that are partners in prayer, friends, loved ones that we can join together and say, rather than you going it alone, we can put 10,000 to flight. What could you do if you had two or three people? What could you do if you had four or five people? Many, many, many more. So you add power to your prayer. But you get that through revelation knowledge on the inside. Revelation knowledge on the inside, knowing that you're moving forward in what God's called you to do because the greater one lives on the inside of you. You're not just some old, weak, feeble, paper bag Christian. You're not just, you know, how many remember those old paper bags you used to get your groceries in, right? They were kind of tough, actually, but when you got them wet, they were no good. Well, you're not just a no good Christian. You're, you're a Christian. That Jesus lives in you and he's got a purpose for you. So he's saying, go from 1,000 to flight to 10,000 to flight. Two born-again believers can begin to see Jesus and bring him on the scene. Now go with me to Matthew 18, verse 20. Matthew 18, verse 20. We will get to Luke yet. Matthew 18, verse 20. Amen. 
I'm going to just read up a little bit here in verse 18. Matthew 18. And I'm going to read from verse 18. It says, Surely I say to you that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind and whatever you loose. The other word for that would be allow. Okay? So you've got to really begin to say, what am I turning loose in my life? What am I turning loose in my life? What am I allowing in my life? Amen? What am I allowing in my life? Whatever you're allowing in your life is what you're going to get. And so whatever, you're, you know, whatever you see going on in heaven, if you take the Lord's Prayer and you begin to look at that, it says, as it is in heaven, so it should be in your life. So what's going on in heaven? Well, there isn't sickness in heaven. There isn't poverty in heaven. There isn't fear in heaven. There isn't failure in heaven. There's God's fullness in heaven. And so God is saying here, begin to allow that to happen in your life. Again, I say that if two or three agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Notice it said, who is doing the doing? My Father. Your heavenly Father. It's not you doing the doing, but it's showing you that the prayer of agreement, you need to get into the prayer of agreement. I don't care if you've got to message somebody on Facebook and say, let's agree in prayer, or you've got to message them on your phone, or you've got to message them because they're sitting in aisle three of church. When you begin to hook up with somebody and say, let's get into that prayer of agreement, amen? You need to pray for your church. Take that opportunity and say, you know what? Maybe you could find a believer or two and say, you know what? Let's get together and pray. Or maybe you, you say, well, I don't know if I could get together. But you could covenant in your heart and say, I'm going to pray for the service every Sunday. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be sure to take five, ten minutes at home because, oh, pastor, I can't get here or whatever. And, you know, while I'm having my cereal, I'm going to make sure that I begin to pray and come into agreement with the pastor that whatever he's got in store to pray for this service and to pray for what's going on in people's lives. Take that opportunity wherever you are. You could be out, you know, chopping wood saying, Father, I'm going to take that time while I'm out there for 15 minutes loading up the old furnace. I'm going to take that time and come into agreement with the pastor. I'm going to come into agreement with my brother or my sister or maybe the spirit revelation on the inside gives a, another prayer request that somebody mentioned today and so maybe you're somewhere and suddenly you think of Caitlin's friend on crutches and so you just say Lord I thank you in Jesus name that that ankle is healed and set free in the name of Jesus maybe you're somewhere else you're out at the on the treadmill in the morning you know and you're working out and suddenly the spirit on the inside says come into agreement with Pat and pray for Rick and say, Lord, I thank you that in Jesus' name those muscles are set free. And you do that right on the treadmill, right at minute five, you know. And so begin to get that revelation on the inside, but begin to step out. And not try and do it on your own, but enter into the prayer of agreement. Again, I say, if two or three on earth agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. I am there in the midst of them. So, so far we've got three there, and three there, and three there, and four there, and three there, and two there, and then me. Well, there's a whole lot of threes here. So God's in the midst of us. Don't let the enemy try and shake you. I get it. It's not always fun coming to church and going, man, there's so many empty chairs. I understand that. I feel that just like you do. But you know what? The bottom line is God is preparing us. God is doing something in our life when we come into agreement with Him. He's the one. We saw that earlier. He's the one that brings the increase. He's the one that brings the overflow. We're just supposed to be obedient, to be in covenant with what God has given us revelation on the inside to do. So you're touching lives. You say, well, Pastor, how does that matter? How does that mean? I want you to think of people in your life that you've touched through this church. I want you to think of people in your life that you say, well, what does that mean, Pastor? Well, let's just think of a few things, okay?